So say we're trying to make something that's um, like an inventory-based app, right? So we have the ability to enter in an inventory item. We have the ability to s track how much of that product we've received and how much of that product we sold. So it's simple, right? We have to create a thing, and then the thing has to be adjustable up and down in value. Um, a few steps for that. So we could create it so that you have just a, a thing for each individual product you'd have, but that doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense because we're going to want to look in general, right? So I would like to make something that is basically just a product, right? So I'm going to actually go into data, get a new type, just going to call it a product. And you'll see a bunch of other stuff over here just because this is like a generic sandbox I use for testing ideas and stuff, but product name, which will be a text field. A little product quantity, which will be a number field. There we go. So, and then I have to make it so I can input products. So, we'll just make a quick little add product thing here. And now, normally, you'd make this like a separate screen. You're adding products, you're adding more details usually than this, but let's just make it a name with a quantity for make keep it basic. Silly. All right, so and then I'm gonna make a drop down too because why I want the drop down is I'm gonna use it in a minute here, but I want to just basically say list of products and we're gonna do dynamic choices. Types of choices will be product choice source. We'll be do a search for products and the caption will be the product's name. There we go. So basically we'll enter a product here. We'll see it on our list here. So let's, let's click preview. Do, 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 do. Loading. There we go. So as you can see here, nothing, right? So let's do beans. I should have made it so this one actually disappears because right now I didn't, I didn't go back and make it reset this, but I also didn't build the workflow, so that's why I didn't do that. Great. So, building a workflow helps, not just discussing what you want it to do. It's a good thing to remember to do. Data and things. Let's create a new thing from that button, and we are going to create a new product. And the new product will have a product name and a quantity. So the quantity is going to be zero. Type a zero in there. Product name is going to be the... Input new product name, value. There we go. And then we want to reset relevant inputs. There we go. So let's try that again. Beans. Rice. Beans and rice, there we go. There's a gap here because I pushed it while there was nothing there, and I never told it not to make things with a blank value. And leaks, there. Beans, rice, and leaks. And if we look at our data, we can go to app data, we can click on products, and we can see we have leaks, rice, beans. If I want to, I can just delete this blank one I accidentally made. And we can actually change that setting too to make sure I don't do that again. Input should not be empty. There we go. Now I won't be able to accidentally put something like that. Great. So what I want now is I'm going to drag this over here. Make this. This is just a text, random text. I just all I'm looking for here is quantity, right? So I'm going to go with heading one. So I have a big number and insert dynamic data that will be do a search for product product oop get rid of that product 
name equals the drop down list products value product name. All right. Let's wait. So I'm going to use basically if I adjust this, this should pull up a number uh, and it should show me the product's quantity, which is what we want. I actually have two of these up, so let's get rid of that. So I'll preview this, and what should happen is I should be able to pull up zeros on all of these. So, because when it creates it, beans zero, rice zero, leeks zero, rice zero. Great, and it won't let me make anything without putting anything in here now. So we've done we've done the right thing. Banana, spelled wrong, great. Also zero, perfect. So we're distributing a wide variety of things. So now I want to do inputs, right? So let's input here, call that receive goods. We'll make another one. Call it sell goods. And this is literally just tracking um, for showing functionality, right? So here, click type in receive. Sell. So what well, I'm this is what I want to have happen, right? So if I drop down here, right, it gives me the quantity, right? But, so say I want to look at leeks. I do leeks, which are those, um, it's like a weird onion thing. But if I pull it, drop it down for leeks, it'll show me a zero, right? And then I want to be able to type in receive goods, type in 100. So I'm receiving 100 pounds of leeks, P push receive, and I want that number to go up, right? And then say later, I see something that says we sold 50 of them, I would drop it back down to leaks, push sell for, for leaks. So quick access to see what all of these are doing, right? This isn't sales orders or anything. This is literally just tracking um, pretty simply. So go here, if I go make changes to a thing. So and this is when you click receive. So I want to do a search for a product. Product should be product name equal to the drop down values product name. quantity Oop. first item yeah it's gonna pull a list of them now what we're gonna change is the quantity do plus oh equals this products product quantity plus we also need that field should be input receive goods value should make that a number field integer and this one too make these both integers which means they're numbers and then I go back to here for what I was working on this value good all right so I can add right and we're gonna do something very similar with this other button right so what we did with the other one was we said whatever's here but whatever whatever this is we want to add this much more to it so it should affect that number this one we want to say things make changes to a thing thing to change would be do a search for product name equals drop down this products value part name 
and then we want the first item because it's going to evaluate a list, but there's only going to be one item in the list. So we're just going to grab the first item in that list. And then we are going to adjust part quantity. And to do that, this products, then we have to have it now equal this products product quantity minus sell goods value. There we go. So this should allow us then to change that number. And let's see if we did it right. Great, so we have rice. We want to add 100. We have 100. We want to sell 50. We sold 50. Um, we did forget to reset these boxes. But let's see what happens if I sell 1,000. So there's a problem there that I can sell 10,000 less, or sorry, 1,000, or yeah, it was 10,000. 10,000 more than I have. Um, so we would have to put restrictions on this box. So let's go back here. Um, so it has a set range, minimum, maximum, um, minimum value of one. Maximum value, um, we will do a search for product, and the maximum value will be the a maximum amount that we have, obviously, right? So if we do and back down to our list of products, grabbing the value name again, right? So we're basically just filtering this by name. Um, if you're making a larger, more robust kind of product, you'd want to use unique IDs so that each customer that's using your app would then be only searching based on their unique IDs for anything that they're ever doing. Um, the display stuff that your customers are going to see is like the name of that product, but on the back end, everything would just be calling different unique IDs. Just something to think about, but maximum value would then be just we're going to look for this product, and this product's, we'll take the first item, and that product quantity is our maximum um, sellable goods. We also need to go back in here, and let's make it so when we do that, we make changes to a product, and then we... Reset relevant inputs. We'll do the same thing when this one's clicked. Reset relevant inputs. Great. Now let's go back to it. Let's load in the page. It has to update everything. Make sure it's going to do what we need to do now. Great. So let's grab rice again. Let's receive another 100,000 of it. I liked it better when it just kept rice like that and, and verified the change. But figure out a way around that. So anyway, so we verified it did add those, right? So now it's this much, right? So so goods paste add a one here. It doesn't let me do it. Um, so what we've done is we've essentially made it so it will lock us out from selling more than what we actually have on hand. So we can't sell product we don't have. And this is functionality you can use in a few different ways on your apps, right? So in this case, we're looking at inventory, right? So if we're taking inventory into account and we're receiving goods or preparing to sell goods, we might have stages in there, right? So we might receive goods. We might move them to a stage where they are um, goods in process, which means like they're being worked on. People are finishing the goods. They're adding parts to it. They're labeling. They're packaging. Uh, they're combining things. Whatever they're, they're Whatever the value add you have that you're doing, that's what's happening inside that portion, right? So maybe we move from received goods, we push goods into that, right? Great, goods are now there. And then we then take those goods and we make them sellable, right? So that's the next stage of sellable. So we would never want that to go below a certain point and sell through it, right? So I wouldn't want my sales rep to sell 10 of something that I have two of. So they might just be clicking really quick and not realizing what they're doing, and they might click on rice, and they might say, great, I'm going to sell 100,000 pounds of rice, even though we don't have it. 
um, when this gives them the ability then to say, well, we can do 90,000, and then we can do 10,000 once we get it in and receive it. We just don't have it. Um, and that kind of creates stop gaps for different um, functionalities, right? So you could even have them have it set up so you would have this, and then you would have it say a back order quantity that has to be fulfilled or something, which would then tell receiving, right, or ordering, like, hey, we have 10,000 more that's going to be outstanding on an invoice that needs to be taken care of. But this is just simple functionality, right? So this is just saying, you know, we received this, we want this to go. This is what we're receiving, this is what we are selling. Um, received, sold. Pretty simple. Um, pretty quick, easy app to make. We started with beans, we're ending with beans. Um, anything else you kind of would like to see um, in terms of creating stuff on Bubble, just leave it down below. Um, let me know. I like you know, making quick little things like this. It's fun. Um, it's also fun to kind of think of things that I haven't had to build before. So if you have any ideas, anything that um, you're thinking of that you'd like to see, just leave it down below and I'll see if I can make a video on it. And if uh, maybe I'll get to learn something too, um, just in trying to figure it out with you. So subscribe for more. Thank mm -hmm. you.